Oh, Wednesday afternoon and time for the midweek update. Dave here at Scale Models Midwest in Altoona, Iowa. Thanks for checking back the channel. Just showing you what I've got here. Um, what I was working on is the kit that I'm doing for a friend of mine. And uh, it's the number 10 Tide Thunderbird, but it's not. It's actually going to be the number 11 Budweiser Thunderbird driven by Bill Elliott. Is it going to be 100% accurate? Probably not, but uh, it's just going to be a quick build while I'm still working on the charger for Ron Keselowski. But um, just showing you here, what I have on the table it just represents about an hour, an hour and a half of cleanup. I've got another video to show of the other parts that I have put together. I'll be putting this in the paint booth putting in uh, two different types of primer. One, I'll be doing uh, flat black or matte black primer for everything. And then for the interior and interior roll cage and everything, I'll be doing a uh, light gray. Just kind of show off some detail, just having fun with the kit. And then uh, the body, of course, I'll be painting a solid red uh, once I have that primed. But I was also gonna show you what I noticed on the body too. Uh, kind of indicative of a lot of older kits, just something for you to look out for. One thing too, uh, if you end up building one of these older kits, one of the things that I noticed when I was putting it together <clears throat> was here on the roll cage. Get this stuff out of the way. Um, I noticed here at the front the current monogram kits that Salvino's JR is putting out for their cars. This is flat, but this here you notice there's a definite rise, and that's actually to be expected. Because according to the kit instructions, the dashboard is supposed to sit at an angle once it's in place. So that's all well and good. If you're building this kit, this is again um, early 90s, maybe mid 90s at best monogram kit. That dashboard is supposed to sit at an angle. And you can see when it's at an angle, the actual dash face is properly situated. And I actually like the way this dash looks. I wish there was a way I could just make a resin copy of that and put that in a lot of kits because that's just well detailed. Can't really see it right now since it's just in white styrene, but once it's painted detailed, it's going to look pretty cool. Again, this is going to be a quick kit, a lot of paint detail, um, no wiring, nothing like that. It's just going to be a quick build, put up on the shelf, let my friend enjoy it. Let me show you the rest of the stuff I have ready for primer. Okay, so next quick video I've got here, the rest of the parts, um, had the headers put together, and I really like the way these kind of folded into one another. I like that setup. Engine's put together once it's uh, got its base coat. I'll do the paint detailing after that. Suspension for the front, nothing really to write home about. It is what it is. It's there, cleaned up, ready to go. Same with the rims. The body... You can probably tell right away my nemesis, the hood fit, has reared its ugly head. But, worse still, the body's warped. If you notice here, the very front end especially, I have the bottom sitting flat and the front is warped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to soak this in some hot water for a few minutes and then pull it out and just kind of lightly hand massage it to where it's resting flat on the front as it is in the back. Um, I test fit the chassis to this and it looks fine but it is fairly obvious and I just wanted to make it look level. So that's really a tried and true um, thing to do. Just put a body that's warped in hot water and then a few minutes pull it out, gently massage it, don't overdo it. You don't want to break your body. And this plastic, 25 plus years old, could be pretty flimsy. So you just want to be careful. But got that. Like I said, I'll be putting this in the primer here in a few minutes. I want to show you one last time before I did that. When I was looking at the Ron Keselowski charger, um, the front end does not have the, uh, if I can find the part here, hang on real quick.
Yeah. Top one. If you look, a lot of the uh, front grill pieces have a little bit of an indent where the headlamp assemblies would go through versus the other part. But I was looking at the tree, thought at first I might have to sand them. According to the pictures, the charger that Ron Keslowski raced, whether it's the 19 or the uh, 99, uh, they're flat. And then I went and I looked at the Salvinos JR72 Dodge Charger, number 11, and I noticed that that grill also looked flat. So they've included this piece in the kit. It's flat, it doesn't have a step designed to the headlamps to the grill. So I'm gonna use this. And then of course, it was just very simple. Had the little 99 and 19 decals on the front where the headlight would be and call it a day. I will be writing up a list of the things I plan to do to this car as I'm building it. And uh, I'll have a little check mark off of each one as I go through it. So at the end of the video, I'll show you what I plan on doing with the charger. Um, but again, it's going to take a while. That's why I'm gonna build some other kits in the meantime. So let me get this into the spray booth and we'll follow up.
okay, hopefully you can see this, but I've got a little wish list on what I want to do with the charger, starting with uh, the paints. Been looking at the Tamiya palette. For 99, it's a purple color, so I'm either gonna go with Tamiya TS24 purple or TS37 lavender. Uh, if I go with number 19, looks like the uh, TS51 racing blue fits the bill. I've already opened and hinged the trunk, but I'm also tentatively looking at extending the wheel wells to meet the body insides. Uh, the front grille, I already showed you that part. I'm use parts 20L and 20R for the flat grille faces. And I'm also going to use RC car heat shrink tubing for the roll cage padding and then craft wiring or string for tying the ends together. Of course, the photo etch seat belts, I would really love to do those. Uh, use the photo etch set for the uh, lower front balance as well as front spoiler. Uh, rear tail lamp black out panel the interior gauge panel and gauge rings for the engine of course wiring the distributor uh, additional carb detail braided lines to various ancillary systems like the oil cooler trans cooler and so on and then finally some miscellaneous items like the dash toggle switches I've already done I might add a few more uh, additional wiring and hoses as needed as well and then the trunk deal uh, the detail for that I would include a uh, clear fuel tubing to the fuel cell as well as the overflow tube and still plan on using the uh, 3D printed rear axle assembly and brakes including the front brakes from Jim Rogers uh, plus the photo etched windshield braces so that's pretty much what I have in mind and it might change might add some stuff might take some stuff away from it uh, but that's what I have in mind for really going all out with the detail on this car it's always good if you want to build a model and really go into detail come up with a to-do list. What do you want to accomplish on the kit? And uh, then just tackle it one little step at a time. One more item, and then we're done. Okay, I actually have two items to show you, and then we are done, I promise. Uh, first one, mail call. Got two cards in the mail, and uh, one of them is from Mike at Scale Speedworks. Right there. Really nice card. I like the graphic. Um, Go check his channel out. A great model builder. Appreciate the uh, compliments and the comments that you left on the back of the card, Mike. Certainly appreciate it. I uh, believe uh, my card should be coming out to you soon, so um, thanks again. This is definitely going up on the Wall of Fame. Um, I actually found some uh, cork board that I'm actually going to mount up here and start putting these cards up because I've got at least a dozen now, if not more. So i uh, real anxious to start getting these up on the wall so I'm not staring at just the concrete. I want to stare at some pretty cool cards and get some inspirations. Speaking of which, Rob from Time Machines Scale Models, another great channel to check out. I'll put the descriptions, uh, or sorry, there are links in the descriptions so you can go check them out if you haven't already and if you haven't subscribed to them, please do so. Subscriptions are free, get notifications, that way we can kind of keep everybody showing various styles of building, various kits that we're building, and just get the interest in the hobby up to that level where it was like in even the 70s and early 80s. But still, this kit, or I should say this card, I had been really looking forward to for a good time because I've seen it on other people's mail calls on their channels and I was like, man, I can't wait to get this one. And, you know, really, uh, Rob, I wonder why. You notice, 57 Chevy is one of my favorites. And uh, I've got the convertible version of your hardtop version and they look like they're about the same color. So I was really looking forward to getting this card. Now I've got it and I'm a happy guy. Uh, I love getting cards from other YouTube model builders. So, um, you know, thanks. Thanks for the compliments and the comments you leave on the back. If you want a shop card, my email address is uh, in the description. Shoot me an email with your address. I'll be more than happy to send you out a couple cards. Um, other than that, uh, that's it for today as far as the cards. And then, last but not least, I'm a member of the Sabino's JR Model Builders Club, and I got some kits in the mail today. Uh, one of them I'll show to you. The other ones, I won't just yet. I'm going to wait until I start seeing other people showing them off. But the first one is our kit of the month. It's the Bobby Allison 81 Pontiac Le Mans. This thing almost won Daytona in 1981, but Richard Petty won it. Uh, there's a really cool video on YouTube. I highly recommend checking it out because there was a, a really nice backstory about this car. Uh, rather 
controversial backstory about this car uh, regarding, you know, non-payment, um, fraud, if you will, the kind of it was a fly-by-night operation. Um, but it was a car that a lot of people apparently feared because it had the potential to win it all. But uh, Petty went and took it. I think that was his six Daytona 500 went out of seven. So, um, and I think this came in second. Go back and check the video. It's on YouTube. Great story behind it. But what is also cool about being a Builders Club member is you get decals, extra decals. So watch this. I'm going to go through it rather quickly. Buick Regal decals for Richard Petty. More chicken and beer decals for number 12. I believe that is uh, Neil Bonnet. Could be Neil Bonnet, I think. I'm assuming it's Neil Bonnet, but it's uh, Junior Johnson Racing. Of course, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But still, Budweiser and KFC. Chicken and beer. Can't be wrong about that. All right. Next set of decals for uh, the number five of uh, Kyle Larson. And what's also neat about this one is if you don't want to uh, mask and paint, the white, it looks like these are the white decals for that very car. So, nice little bonus there. They started doing that early on with the uh, Vermilion for the Petty Chargers, but uh, with the new next-gen kit that's come out, they've started doing that with their other kits. Um, just use a lot of setting solution on it to get around the compound curves and what have you, and you'll be all right. But they also have way really cool decals for windshields, tail lamps, headlamps, side exhaust, grill piece, what have you. Uh, number 11, Kale Yarborough, First National Bank, uh, Oldsmobile from, I believe, 78. Extra set of decals there. Extra set of decals for the Teflon 28. And then, look at that. I think I'll be using the black decals just to see how they turn out because uh, the... Le Mans is more of a slab-sided car, so I think these decals will go on a lot better than, say, on the uh, Vermilion decals on the 92 Pontiac Grand Prix that I had some difficulty with, but still got them on there. Just, again, take your time, be patient, use a lot of setting solution, and should be doing just fine. But that's pretty much it. Um, I've got nothing else to show you tonight. I'm going to get upstairs, uh, get some stuff taken care of, get this edited and, and out. And uh, got nothing else for you except uh, just have a great rest of the week. We'll have a video out on Saturday. And as always, um, if you see a kid out there that you like, doesn't matter what kind. Just get out there and support the hobby. Buy that kit. Get the supplies you need for it. Build it. Show it off. If you'd like to show it off on this channel, I'd love to show off your skills. Send me a few pictures, and I'll post them on a future video and get you taken care of. With that, have a great rest of the week, and we will catch you on Saturday.